something bad about every country, in no particular way. Sri Lanka's economy has been collapsing since 2019 thanks to a corrupt government and the evaporation of tourism because of the big C. They owe about $51 billion to the world and only have about $25 million in the bank. Uganda has a terrible water supply thanks to being landlocked and a weirdly booming population. I bet the government will probably help out, but they're probably just waiting for the next Mr. Beast video to drop. Besides being an F-tier apex gun, Mozambique has one of the highest birth rates, but also one of the lowest life expectancies at birth. Good luck, son. If you have such bad judgment, that you find yourself in Honduras, try not to get sick as they only have one doctor per 3,000 people. Take the economic approach and just be mugged and left for dead. Freedom of speech and freedom of the press are still restricted in the UAE. Hold anti-government protests like we do in the US and you'll get stoned, not the good kind. Iceland has committed some of the worst political atrocities in history, from purchasing green beans to shooting protected ducks and even making Rude comments. Over 90% of Gabon is covered in rainforest. The other 10% is covered in AIDS and malaria. When 18th century Serbian villagers experienced anything inexplicably spooky, they blamed the recently deceased, dug them up, and killed them all over again. They would call these bodies vampires. The entire country of Lesotho is more than 3,200 feet above sea level, which is pretty high, but not as high as having the world's highest self-deathing rate. Paraguay once lost a war against Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay in the late 1800s. They then doubled down and kept fighting, only to lose over two-thirds of its population in the end. For over 500 years, the tiny island nation of Mauritius traded hands between the Dutch, French, and British, and they all dealt in heavy slave trade. The Swatini is the last absolute monarchy in Africa. Too bad it's still a dirt-poor third world country. For over a decade, Haiti accounted for over 30% of the Atlantic slave trade, importing 40,000 slaves a year at its height, but then they revolted and won independence. Israel is a huge fan of huge walls, and not a huge fan of neighbors, but not calling out any in particular. Djibouti is one of the funniest named countries in the world. It's also one of the largest destinations for human trafficking. A little less funny now, isn't it? You think the Netherlands looks like this, but it actually looks more like this. Montenegro translates to Black Mountain, and is in fact not a reference to your friend Monte. Translating to the savior, it's exactly what El Salvador needs since it has been ranked as having the highest murder rate in the world. 68% of Tanzania's population lived below the poverty line of $1.25 a day. Minimalist YouTubers should take notes. Liechtenstein was the last European country to allow women to vote in 1984. Nicaragua has no formal address system, so if you're trying to go anywhere, an address will probably look like third house down from the second left turn after the Taco Bell. Good luck, Amazon drivers. Sweden was a mighty empire in the late 1500s, but then they tried invading Poland, that no one has ever successfully invaded Poland. Sweden was no longer a mighty empire after that little stunt. Belize has a Bigfoot equivalent called El Sisimito, which runs around killing hunters and ripping off their thumbs. The country of Chad has a mad sharp jawline. It also has one of the highest mother mortality rates in the world. Malawi's president once sold off a private jet and 35 Mercedes-Benz to raise money for the country's economy. Too bad it has the third poorest economy in the world. Burkina Faso is an African country with the capital of Ouagadougou, which just sounds like it was founded by Adam Sandler. In ancient Italy, the Roman Empire was at its peak in the year 117 AD, or C or whatever. It then did a 360 and fell over in the year 476. The last traces of the Roman Empire can be found across many middle-income shopping areas in the US. Seychelles says shells by the seashore. Even though it's regarded as the Garden of Eden, it's plagued with terrible plastics pollution. Their saving grace is that their iconic sea coconuts are making me act up something awful. In 2011, Malta held a record for most people gathered dressed as storybook characters at 453, but then was obliterated by Singapore with 1,560 in 2014. Clearly, neither country has ever heard of or smelled a Comic-Con. Mali was home to the world's richest king, Mansa Musa. Now, it's home to the world's largest mud building. Colombia boasts a thriving coffee export, but they also dunk cheese in said coffee and sell you donkey porn on the side of the road. Take your pick. It already sucks enough being a journalist in general, but especially in Eritrea where it is ranked last in press freedom in the entire world. Tuvalu is a tiny group of islands northeast of Australia with an area of just 10 square miles. Almost no one goes there, so who cares? Give it up for Tuvalu, everybody. Liberia had a crazy civil war from 1989 to 2003. Over a quarter of a million lives were lost, with most of the killing performed by child soldiers. Imagine getting 360 no scoped by a four year old, but IRL. Funerals in the Dominican Republic last a total of nine days three days of grief, three days of silence and reflection, and three days of acceptance. Just huck them in the ground and move on already. It is considered very rude to refuse food or drink in Ukraine. 
Be sure to take seconds or thirds of all the food that the U.S. is paying for. In 1847, a quarter of Ireland's population kicked the Guinness-soaked bucket due to the infamous Irish potato famine. Potatoes rotted and the British government was neglectful as usual. A million people died. You know how it is. Denmark is home to some great social welfare programs and a strong education system. Too bad you gotta pay over 50% in taxes for it. The early 1600s was the darkest time in Russia's history where a famine killed off a third of its population and then a war killed off another half of that. Eh, good thing Russia's peaceful nowadays, at least. Bhutan used to be in complete isolation until the 1970s, banning any foreigners from entering it. Not that you could really get in anyway, considering it's just friggin' steep-ass mountains everywhere. I won't go into detail about Greece. Pause the video here and look this up. Just don't use a work computer. Bangladesh's capital city of Dhaka is ranked one of the worst cities to live in because of insufferable traffic, pollution, and density. Just like any other city, I guess. Guatemala was home to the longest Latin American civil war in history, lasting 36 years and resulting in 200,000 people getting Guatemala to death. Tragically, there are no guinea pigs in Guinea. It actually really pisses me off. North Macedonia used to just be Macedonia, but Greece bullied them into changing the name because a part of Greece is also called Macedonia. I don't know, man. Tunisia has some of the world's most beautiful golden beaches. It also has some of the highest domestic abuse rates. When Fidel Castro took control of Cuba, he destroyed and banned all games of Monopoly. Reports of family arguments plummeted overnight. Zimbabwe's economy went through the ringer beginning in 2005. The government printed a $100 trillion bill. In reality, it was only worth about 40 cents. Give it up for inflation. Austria's main exports are automobiles, paper products, and genocidal dictators. So when Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, he really landed in the Bahamas. He also enslaved almost all of the locals over the next 30 years. Costa Rica is home to a mythical demon monkey called Lamona, which screams at you from the treetops. <laughs> Before he was president, JFK was marooned on one of the 992 Solomon Islands. He was later rescued by locals only to be murdered by his own government. The island was later named Kennedy Island. China is but I gotta say, he does look like them. St. Vincent and the Grenadines sounds like the name of a shitty band. In reality, it's just a group of shitty Caribbean islands. I guarantee no one from Burundi will see this video because only 3% of its population has internet access. It's ranked as the poorest country in the world. Comment below if you're from Burundi. Turkmenistan is home to the Gates of Hell, a natural gas crater that has been burning since the 1980s. Probably why it's one of the least visited countries in the world. Cameroon is home to over 2,000 different ethnic groups and almost zero rights for women. The Buttholes in Nepal decided to be the only country in the world to not have a rectangular flag, but I guess that makes sense for a country that still uses the caste system. The country of Panama prioritizes use of freshwater reserves for the needs of the Panama Canal rather than the needs of farmers. You can't eat boats, fellas. Or can you? In 1800s Portugal, Diogo Alves killed a total of 76 people by pushing them off of a 200-foot ledge over the Aguas Libres Aqueduct. He was caught and sentenced to death by hanging in 1840. Cote d'Ivoire, also called the Ivory Coast, is the world's largest producer of cocoa beans <laughs> through child slave labor. Aww. You can taste the sweat and tears in every bite. Yeah, Borat's homeland of Kazakhstan is a real country. Here, you can play the ancient game of Kokpar, where two men fight over a headless goat corpse on horseback. Real fun stuff. Being a nation of islands, the Maldives will be one of the first to get wiped out when sea levels eventually rise. But look at the turtles! Dominica's economy heavily relies on agriculture. This wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for all the hurricanes that just outright obliterate crops annually. One of the most popular and rapidly growing internet communication platforms was founded in Estonia. That's right, Skype. Everyone uses Skype. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines, sending 10 billion metric tons of magma into the air and shifting global temperatures by one degree. But I have to use a paper straw, right? St. Kitts and Nevis was almost always home to tobacco and sugar plantation slaves until it was abolished in 1834. Oh yeah, and Alexander Hamilton was born here. In Oman, you're not allowed to spend more than 10% of your monthly earnings on alcohol. So when you try and fail, you'll be standing there like, Oh man. Some Malayan citizens visit graveyards at night, providing offerings to the dead in hopes of receiving winning lottery numbers. Syria is home to some of humanity's oldest structures in the world. Some of these remains and ruins have survived over 7,000 years, only to get blown up by extremist groups. World famous Grammy award-winning singer Angelique Kijo was born in Benin. Oh, you never heard of her? 
Yeah, me neither. St. Lucia apparently has a pretty bad police brutality problem, so best avoid going there if you want to commit crimes. You probably just get what you deserve. Nauru is another one of them tiny island nations like Tuvalu. Although it's so tiny, it is the fattest nation in the world with 88.5% of its adult population classified as obese. They've also never won an Olympic gold medal. I wonder why. Turkey has some strange customs with babies, from covering newborns in salt in order to give them resistance bonuses to placing a turtle under their pillows at night for protection. Muslims in Brunei are forbidden from marrying outside of their own religion. It's a crime punishable by death. I do, more like I die. Anyway, it's a holiday in Cambodia. It's tough kid, but it's life. It's a holiday in Cambodia. Don't forget to pack a wife. Madagascar supplies 80% of the world's vanilla. Unfortunately, there are no talking animals like certain movies would have you believe. If you're a bad boy or girl, you can still be legally executed by firing squad in Indonesia. So think twice before you commit murder or decide to go into drug trafficking while touring the country. Palestine is the main reason why Israel is such a huge fan of walls. Also, people have been telling me about a free Palestine, but for the life of me, I can't find where to claim it. Micronesia is a slightly smaller Nisia than Indonesia. It's not uncommon common for school children to be kidnapped in Nigeria. Since 2020, over 1,000 students have been abducted and held for ransom. At least it's a good excuse for not doing your homework. Yemen is home to the Well of Hell, a sinkhole that local legends claim is home to a head-stealing djinn. Turns out it's just home to snakes, crocodiles, but no Robin Williams genie. On average, each Luxembourg citizen over 15 years old smokes over 6,300 cigarettes a year. And they're only the world's second heaviest smokers, right behind Andorra. North Korea is best Korea. <laughs> South Africa is home to a bunch of bums because it currently has the highest unemployment rate in the world at 29.8%. For comparison, the US rate is 3.7% as of this video. Ah, uh, Mexico. America's pants. Stay in the tourist areas or the next time your family sees you will be in a live leak video. In 2018, Venezuela experienced a 65,000% inflation rate. One US dollar is about 3.6 million Venezuelan bolivares. Bahrain is home to the world's largest underwater theme park. The downside? Not a single water slide. Just a big dumb plane to explore. You can't fly that thing down there. Senegal was once the largest slave trading center on the African coast from the 15th to 19th centuries. And as such, is one of the biggest cases of friendly fire in history. Jamaica is a very superstitious country. There's all kinds of local legends ranging from ghosts that steal your voice to an enraged flaming bull that chases you for being out late at night. Germany. Uruguay has been consistently rated as the safest country in South America in terms of violent crimes, but that also means that it's the most expensive to live in. Safety comes with a price. Bolivia was home to the greatest lake in the world, Lake Pupo. Tragically, it has fallen victim to climate change and completely dried up. Is driving your gas-guzzling car worth the loss of Lake Pupo? I think not. Moldova is Europe's poorest country. With an average GDP per capita of only $4,551, it's no wonder why all of their smart, hard-working youngings are fleeing the country for better opportunities. If you plan on proposing to a loved one, try not to purchase a blood diamond from Sierra Leone. It could end up costing someone an arm and a leg. The previous leader of Suriname, Desi Buters, was the military commander during a coup in the 1980s. He was arrested for drug trafficking, served 11 years, and was then elected president for 10 years before being subsequently arrested again for murdering 15 political opponents. He's a real one. All right, guys, we're about halfway through. I hope you're remembering to stay hydrated. If not, here's your water break. All right, that's enough. Lebanon has a crazy garbage crisis that makes even Los Angeles look sterile by comparison. Environmentalists have tried different cleanups, but the crisis remains, well, a crisis. For example, in this image alone, you can see all of my online gaming teammates. Despite being a group of islands, Cape Verde is one of the driest countries in Africa. In the 20th century, severe droughts and famine caused the death of 200,000 people. Ah, Rwanda. If you're in your 20s, you probably remember learning about the Rwandan genocide at school. In 1994, nearly a million people were slaughtered during the Rwandan Civil War. The only reason you know the capital of Thailand is because your friend punched you in the ball shortly after telling you. Somalians are huge fans of pasta, thanks to years of colonization by Italy. Australia is home to over 2,400 species of spider. Arachnophobes? Stay away. In 1990, Ecuador had their first female president, Rosalia Arteaga. Before being forced to resign, she served her country for two whole days. Singapore has some crazy laws. Here's a few of them. 
Walk around your house naked, chew gum, smoke, steal Wi-Fi, sing in public, feed pigeons, not flush a toilet, urinate in public, drink alcohol after 10 p.m., or be gay. It's also illegal to unalive yourself, though I'm not sure how they'd arrest you for that. If you want to name your child in Hungary, you're restricted to a list of approved names. Instead of torturing your child with a dumb name, you can instead grant your child a meaningful name such as Zev or Nolifer or Nurbanu or even Tablachka. Over the past 20 years, Trinidad and Tobago have seen an exponential rise in violent crimes, mostly against women. Come on guys, beat your meat, not a woman. In 1983, Sudan enforced Sharia law, subsequently banning all alcohol. The entire country's alcohol stock was dumped into the Nile River, so at least the crocodiles got lit. The national dish of Peru is called koi. It's, it's just a whole roasted guinea pig. Saudi Arabia is one of the world's top executioners, performing 196 public executions in 2022, right behind Iran's 576 and China's unknown thousands. Azerbaijan is known as the land of fire because of frequent spontaneously combusting mountainside natural gas leaks. The Marshall Islands got completely dunked on when serving as a nuclear bomb test site in the 40s and 50s. The islands are riddled with bomb blast buttholes. The Central African Republic has been a complete shit show ever since gaining independence in 1960. Constant coups, internal conflict, and the like make this country a no-go. Antigua and Barbuda are two more dumbass islands among other dumbass islands in the dumb shit Caribbean, meaning it probably had slaves and was visited by pirates at some point. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, like most African countries, doesn't have a pretty past. The entire population was violently enslaved under the Belgian crown to farm and harvest rubber from trees. Africa really got the short end of the stick in history. There's a lot of things you're not allowed to bring into Uzbekistan. This includes, but is definitely not limited to, Monaco is the wealthiest country in the world with over 30% of its population being millionaires. Sounds impressive until you realize that the entire country can fit in Central Park in New York with a population of 38,000 people. There are at least 1.5 million cats that live in Cyprus, which means they way outnumber the amount of people. This is actually not a negative fact, unless you're allergic to cats. You're completely SOL if you have a toothache in Morocco. There's only one dentist for every 800,000 residents. Sounds like it's time to break out the pliers and do it yourself. Besides being the best country in the world, the United States is also the greatest country in the world. Togo is an African country. I'll give you a wild guess what thing might have happened there. If you're a masochist, you can voluntarily spend the night in the Karasta Prison Hotel in Latvia, where you can be interrogated, punished, and harassed as you sleep in a cold cell. Niger was the country you were terrified to pronounce at school while some other kids were oddly excited to. Angola, African country, slaves. Guyana was home to Jonestown, a lovely little town which had a sudden population decrease from 918 to zero in a matter of a few hours. They drank the flavor aid and committed self-die in the name of Christian socialism. Vanuatu is a group of South Pacific islands, huge fans of cannibalism with the last known case occurring in 1969. According to Vanuatu cooking practices, humans take three to five hours to cook. Still no guinea pigs in Guinea-Bissau, just citizens living off of less than $2 a day. Slovakia is home to the world's tallest cave column which spans 112 feet high. How boring of a country do you have to be where this is a notable fact? If you want to learn about Samoa, you first have to consider the coconut and consider its tree. Also take into consideration Samoa's high obesity and heart disease rate. In New Zealand, sheep outnumber people seven to one. Be cautious, you never know when you're being watched by a sheep. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a single country but sucks as much as two. It's got some of the worst air pollution in Europe, high unemployment, and over 200,000 active landmines in walkable areas. The only thing booming here are your legs. We all know South Korea is the better Korea. I could watch those Korean street food videos all the time. Oh wait, something bad. Um, in general, they're pretty racist towards outsiders. Because of this, South Korea is one of the least diverse countries in the world. There's a town in Mongolia named after you. Sadly, it's pronounced maroon, but that ruins the joke. Libya used to have the world's most boring flag. Then after overthrowing its dictator, they added some pizzazz with the symbol from Link's mirror shield for some reason. Must be huge Ocarina of Time fans. Hmm, Barbados. Caribbean island, let's see. 
Pirates and slaves. Ah oh, yes, but white slaves too. Enemies of the British crown were sometimes sent to Barbados to live as indentured servants. The Czech Republic and Slovakia used to be Czechoslovakia, but got divorced in 1993 to find new identities for themselves, leaving behind 15 million disgruntled children. If you ever visit the tiny island nation of Palau, you are required to sign an eco-pledge promising to be a good little boy or girl and not to cram straws directly down a leatherback sea turtle's gullet. Qatar hosted the 2022 World Cup. It cost the country $220. $20 billion and 6,500 migrant workers' lives. All that to host one of the most boring sports in the world. East Timor, or Timor-Leste, declared independence from Portugal in 1975. It was then invaded by Indonesia nine days later and sustained a 24-year period of violence and resistance, resulting in the death of over a quarter million people, or a third of the country's population. The Caribbean island nation of Grenada was invaded by the U.S. in 1983 to stop Cuban influence and rescue U.S. students who were studying on the island. The Comoros Islands off the coast of Africa have experienced over 20 coups since its independence from France in 1975. Speaking of France, you can get legally married to a dead person there. The practice of necrogamy was started back in 1803 as a way for women to marry their fallen soldier boyfriends. This allowed the weeping widows to become a beneficiary of their dearly departed's military pension. This way, both husband and wife end up getting the bag. In 2004, the monarchy of Tonga sued their court jester, Jesse Bogdanov, a Bank of America financial advisor, for mismanaging a over $14 million of the king's money on bad investments. Something something Wall Street Bets joke. Brazil had a record-breaking 59,000 murders in 2017, with only 8% of them resulting in any legal consequence. Ethiopia is home to the cruelest place on earth, the Danakil Depression, which is the country's lowest and hottest region. But don't try to cool off in these pools. They are highly acidic water pools rich in salt, sulfur, and iron, so you'll just end up turning into soup. Although Croatia is stunningly gorgeous and has the worst waste management system in Europe, countries in the European Union recycle roughly 40% of their waste on average. Croatia is in the dumps at just 8%. Finland recently changed its Air Force insignia. Now it looks like this, but back when it was founded in 1918, it looked like this. Keep in mind that the swastika is an ancient symbol of good luck used across many different cultures, until some German buttholes tarnish the image. In Arabic, Iraq means fertile. Y yeah. In India, more people have mobile phones than access to a toilet, so be sure to watch where you step. Since 1389, Armenians have experienced 17 different massacres, with the Armenian Genocide of 1915 being the worst, resulting in around 1.2 million Armenian deaths. Tour guides in Tajikistan used to scam tourists by charging them for Yeti sighting tours in remote valleys, though no Yetis were ever found. Papua New Guinea? No, son. No Guinea here. Just people practicing black magic. 50 to 150 witches are executed each year. Spooky. Ladies, do your best to avoid Afghanistan as it's ranked worst in the world for gender equality. While there's no female heroes, 90% of the world's heroin is produced here. Although Zambia is home to some of Africa's most beautiful landscapes, the city of Kabwe is one of the world's most polluted cities, stemming from decades of lead mining and smelting. Over 100,000 people have reportedly suffered from lead poisoning around the town. Ghana, another African country. More slavery, but the first to gain independence from colonists. Slaves broke their backs for centuries in Egypt so that we could have the absolute banger that is the Prince of Egypt. In Kuwait, you can bet on camel racing. Oh, that isn't surprising? Well, how about camels controlled by robots? Yeah, much more interesting now, isn't it? Robots are really taking all the jobs. Not just the state in the US, the country of Georgia slopped out the tyrannical maniac Joseph Stalin something that not many Georgians are proud of. Meet Chatletics, my Mauritania-locked ultimate Iron Man. Oh, wrong Mauritania. If you speak out against Gambia's corrupt government, you might find yourself kidnapped and thrown in a pit. Talk shit, get the pit. Kiribati is a group of Pacific islands. With a mean elevation of just six feet above sea level, it'll probably become one of the first victims of climate change. Spain is home to a plethora of nudist beaches, which sounds great in theory, until you see the people that actually go to these nudist beaches. Greenland is the perfect place if you hate neighbors, since it's the least densely populated country in the world with only 5 people per 100 square miles. Kyrgyzstan is just mountains, so I hope you like mountains. Sadly, there's still no guinea pigs, even in equatorial guinea. It's for the best though, cause they would probably just have to submit to the brutal authoritarian government. The Vatican City is the smallest country in the world, even though it's just a city. The Pope lives there, and that's bad enough. Although, it's gotta be said, it would make a pretty sweet GTA map. 
Iran experienced an unprecedented socio-economic surge thanks to the White Revolution in the 1960s and 1970s. Free education, increased health care, extreme distribution of wealth to the working class, infrastructure reform, expansion of women's rights, and so much more. It just sucks that all of the religious nuts took over and turned it into the less than ideal place it is today. Iran absolutely fumbled the bag on this one. Canada is America's hat, and boy do they love clubbing seals to death. Chile was home to Augusto Pinochet, one of the world's bloodiest dictators. He took power in 1973 and kidnapped, tortured, and killed thousands. But since it was in the name of fighting communism, world leaders were just like, eh. Slovenia. It's boring as shit. The Republic of the Congo is not the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In fact, it is 100% less democratic, but has the same amount of Ebola. If you didn't have malaria upon entering Kenya, you probably do now. Laos is considered the most bombed country in the world after the U.S. dropped over 270 million cluster bombs during the secret war in the 60s and 70s. Over 80 million remain on the ground, still active. South Sudan. It's like Sudan, but with a cowboy hat. Lithuania was once a world superpower, until it got top rope elbow dropped by Russia in 1655 and finished off by plague and famine. Now Lithuania just chills. Norway is home to many beautiful animals, like whales. Oh yeah, Norway leads the world in whaling. San Marino is a tiny country state in Italy. However, there's not a single olive garden to be seen. Guess what? There's guinea pigs in Argentina. While in Pakistan, try not to express any non-Muslim religious beliefs, or else you might catch yourself in prison on blasphemy charges. Religious freedom? Ain't too good there. The people of Belarus are pretty superstitious. For example, don't whistle in someone's house or you'll blow all of their money away. To mark the end of winter, the people of Poland burn and drown a doll of Marsana, the Slavic goddess of winter and death. The African country of Botswana is 70% desert, 5% elephants, and 25% AIDS. The small African islands of Sao Tome and Principe are major transit points for heroin trafficking. Consisting of mostly desert, only 0.9% of Namibia's land is able to be used for farming, so they have to rely on imports to feed the population. Romania is home to some of Europe's last remaining virgin forests in the Carpathian mountains. <laughs> Virgin nerds! Besides exporting crisp clean water, Fiji used to be known as the Cannibal Islands with the Fijian chief Ratu Udre Udre holding the record for most humans ever eaten. He is known to have eaten almost 1,000 humans in his lifetime. Algeria is Africa's largest country, but only 12% of its landmass is populated because the rest is just stupid desert. Yeah, so a lot of those slavery-ridden African countries I mentioned, the UK might have had something to do with that. They also think this is food. Bulgaria is the most unhappy country in the European Union according to a 2019 survey, scoring just 4.8 out of 10 on the happiness scale. Portugal was second at 6.2. Although Germany is mostly blamed for the violence in World War II, don't forget that Japan invaded China and murdered over 20 million Chinese people using the three alls policy. Kill all, burn all, and loot all. But anime is cool, I guess. Albania officially banned all religious practices in 1967 until the fall of communism in 1991. King Leopold II of Belgium absolutely devastated the Congo. He claimed the territory as his own property and worked it to the bone, collapsing its population by half due to starvation and exhaustion. Belgians are not too proud of their late monarch. In Switzerland in the 19th and 20th centuries, over half a million poor children were taken from their families and forced into farm labor. These children were called Wernsenkinder, or contract children. The Swiss government officially said, oh, my bad, in 2013, so that's nice at least. Myanmar is currently undergoing a civil war since 2021 with over 44,000 casualties so far. But since TikTok hasn't told white women to start protesting it yet, you probably have never heard of it. Besides being the hardest song on Guitar Hero 2, Jordan is a Middle Eastern country currently experiencing one of the worst droughts in history. Everyone please send Jordan a soggy envelope of water to show support. So that's every country in the world. Please tell me in the comments how I'm wrong and how your country is great, and I'll go, well, see ya.